welcome back to our channel. We're the Garcer Twins. I'm Britta. And I'm Carly. We would love it if you would subscribe down below and like this video if you like the content. Today we're doing a get ready with us. We saw a TikTok where, well we've seen a lot of TikToks like this, yeah. where people get ready and talk about the jobs they've had. And we've had too many to put on a TikTok. Yeah. So we were like, let's film a get ready on YouTube and talk about all the jobs we've had. So let's get into it. So we are not gonna have time to like chat about what we're using, but obviously we'll link everything down below. Yeah. I'm pulling up my list because it's really hard to remember. But I guess our first job is easy, easy. if you wanna start there. Yeah, so our first job, we both were like retail associates at JCPenney. Yeah, retail associates. That's what we were, right? Oh, really? Okay. I don't know. What is it called? No, I'm just shocked you remember I, that. I no. think so. Um, so we, our mom worked for JCPenney for like, 30 years before she retired. Yeah. She worked in like the custom decorating department. So she would go into people's homes. Like they would make appointments with her and um, she would bring all her fabric swatches and basically design custom draperies and sometimes like pillows and bedding too. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a really cool service that JCPenney offered. I don't think a lot of stores offered this. Yeah. And so now they have like custom, like oh, you go to a store for a custom window treatment. Yeah. But I, I also think it was cool that JCPenney had that service. Yeah. And it was still expensive, but like more affordable than a place that just does custom drapes. Yeah. So that was her job for 30 years. So she worked for JCPenney, but she wasn't really like in the store. But when we wanted to get jobs when we were 16, because we, um, like we didn't have, like our parents didn't have money to give us to do things. Um, and so we needed to make money to, you know, all the things you want to do in high school, like just go out Which we've been over this, but we were grateful that we had to like work for the money that yeah, we had. Very grateful. We didn't want things to be handed to us. Yeah. Um, so we had, actually we really wanted jobs at Aerie. Remember, this was just a quick backstory. No, I don't remember any of this. Well, we did and they didn't hire us and we were- Oh, we applied? Cool. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. It was like a new store at the time. We're, we're old. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, so our mom basically got us the jobs at JCPenney, but it ended up being like the best high school job. We, we loved, it. loved our coworkers. Um, we, we both worked in the women's department, right? Brady worked in women's yeah. department too. Mm -hmm. Um, we both worked in the women's department and I, if you've never worked retail, it's like so hard to explain, but we don't really like interacting with like people. Yeah. Like I would say we never we never really liked like the customer service aspect, but we really liked I don't know, I liked the downtime. Like yeah, when you me would too. be like folding and just sort of like in your zone. Um we yeah, like I hated being a cashier. Yeah, oh yeah, I hated that. We often worked nights obviously and then weekends because we were in high school. Um and so I remember really liking, um, like, the weekdays. Yeah. Um, I should probably speed this up. But anyway, <laughs> we really liked our jobs there. I remember Grind leaving when we moved to California. And then when we moved to California, we didn't have a job lined up, obviously. We were, again, like, going for college. So we knew we needed something flexible. Yeah, like, retail made sense because we had... Well, I guess you can't even be a bartender until you're 21, huh? I was going to say in we had California, no, you can in Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah, we had no, like, restaurant experience, so the only thing that made sense for us was retail. Yeah. So our friend, Shauna, who we moved in with, she got us a job at Hollister, mm -hmm. which we thought was so cool at the time. Yeah, like, at the time, know. we were like, oh my gosh, like, we're so cool. Yeah. We worked at Hollister, but we hated, hated it. it. Hated we, it every second. Like, you had, like, the person that would, like, stand at the front of the door and, like, do nothing or, like... Again, with the downtime, like, you just wouldn't really get as well, much. The people there were nice. Yeah, the people weren't nice. Like, there was always folding involved, but it was, like, really specific folding. Yeah. And it was so dark in there. So dark. It wasn't, no like, as welcoming. Like, when we were to JCPenney, we would, like, go to our friends in the shoe department, and, like, it was a big store. Yeah. And we just, like, liked it so much more. So then we were, like, well, why don't we just work at JCPenney? And we had talked about this when we were, like, transferring can be hard because they have to have openings. Yeah. Um... But we met with the store manager and he really liked us and hired us both right away. And so then we worked there for like two years. Yeah, and I worked in the home department and I mm -hmm. loved it even more than the women's department. I was still working in the women's department, but again, I really liked the people I worked with. Um, and it was a little more chaotic than the store in Wisconsin. Yeah, it was much larger. Yeah, like it was much larger, but people were still nice. And um, I remember the days flying by there. Like, especially yeah. when we would work like in the mornings, I remember it being like, 
I was like, whoa, the days would just fly. Um, so yeah, we worked there. We we were working both there and Hollister for a bit, but then we quit Hollister because we were like, we're making more money at JCPenney. Because that was the other thing, because we had already worked there, they were able to like give us more money when we transferred, which was really nice. I feel like a lot of companies don't do that. Um, so JCPenney was like a good company to work for. They were, but we still weren't making that much money, so no. then we got another job. Yeah, so, so we then, left Hollister, and then we started working. Well, I think at one time we were overlapping Hollister, JCPenney, and Time Warner Cable. Oh, we were doing all three? Or no, no, it was no, working for Lim and Cheese. Yeah. We had three jobs at one point. Yeah, so, so we started working mm -hmm. freelance for Time Warner Cable. Our friend Caitlin saying. had been doing it. And it was basically like you go, you work only it on the weekends. It wasn't even like for Time Warner. It was like this third party company. Yeah, but you only work on the weekends. Mm -hmm. So we thought like, okay, we can handle that. And it was like weekend mornings to like the afternoon. So like if we had to work at JCPenney we on the weekend. We would still usually work at night. at night. Yeah. yeah. So um, we would go to Walmarts like in San Diego County mm -hmm. and basically like try to sell people Time Warner cable. Yeah. Can you imagine us doing that? We think we'd give you like a clipboard to sell. Yeah. Well, actually, we actually did sell it. And I always blew yes, my mind that did. people would just off the cuff sign up for cable. Well, I do remember not, the deals being good. The deals were good, but yeah. like they were good deals for like a few months and then you had to pay like a lot of money. So but it, it was, was really a really weird. good like incentive. By the way, again, we're old. This was like before Netflix was like, <laughs> <laughs> this was like when Netflix was like a movie, you would get a like DVD. DVD. Uh huh. Um, so yeah, we we liked it because and the people were nice that we worked with. Yeah, the people were nice Um, because we would be in like, well, Walmarts and Best Buys. Yes. And we liked the people that worked at, like, the Best Buys. Yes. They were always really nice to us. Um, and it paid really well. At the time. Yeah, so at the time it paid really well. And like Britta said, it was just weekends. So it was really nice that we were able to um, work both jobs. But, I mean, I think it, I think the program, like, fizzled out. I mean, yeah, they got, like, the, fired. It was it just, just the program stop. Yeah, like, they, no one was doing really good anymore. So they yeah. just sort of, like, stopped the program. Um... But it was a really weird job. So then, well, at, well, we were still working that job, and I think we had like wanted to leave JC Penny. Which like, I wanted to for us. We haven't always worked together. We're gonna get to the jobs we've had yeah. separately. Um. Then we somehow. Oh my God! You know what? I forgot to write down the restaurant we worked. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> because there was just a flip in time. <laughs> no, but you're you're talking about Menchie. Yeah, I'm talking right? about okay, Menchie okay. next. So then I know. Because by the way. There are 27 jobs on my list. <laughs> it's hard to remember. So then we saw that Menchie's, the frozen yogurt place, was opening kind of close to us. I don't even know. At how the time, we were like obsessed with frozen yogurt, as yeah. most of the world was, or California. Yeah, California was. Um, so we were like, oh, let's apply. And I don't know why we thought we would enjoy this. Yeah, like truly why. But I remember they had so many people come for like the open. I don't know what it was called, open interview, and yes. we actually got hired, so I don't know how, why they hired us. We had, like, no food experience. No, but we were nice. Yeah, we were nice, but I hated that job. <laughs> <laughs> we only worked there, like, a no. couple months because, also, this wasn't that close to us. We no. lived in North County, San Diego, and this was in San Marcos, and... Yeah. Like, the mall was way closer. Yeah, to so Penny. we were still working at JCPenney at this time. Mm -hmm. I think Time Warner had, like, just ended or they overlapped for a little bit. Yeah. Um, we, like, basically had three jobs continuously throughout college. Like, some overlap. Two to three. Um, so then, yeah, we were still in college at this point. If you always... We were going to, at this point, we were going to community college. Yeah. It was still a full class schedule, but mm -hmm. we were at Mira Costa. We hadn't um, transferred to Cal State Long Beach yeah. yet. But, yeah, so we... Um, we started working at Menchie's, and basically, I remember, I don't know, you had to, like, fill up the frozen yogurt machines, clean up, check people out. We mostly were cashier, because I feel like I was not good at, like, the machines. We were stuff. really bad at cleaning, which I guess, like, we just aren't domestic. Yeah. But, like, we we could not clean those machines to save our life. Yeah, so, like, like, the, the males. I do like this. I usually do buy it. this. I know. Isn't it nice? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so we mostly did, like, cashier work, and again, like, that's, like, my least favorite thing. Mm -hmm. So we didn't like it. I feel like we quit. I just remember like telling them like it was too far and like we had No, we had gotten the job at the restaurant. That's why we left. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay, you're right. Because they were kind of both weekend jobs. Like, yeah. I think we were working mostly Yeah, weekends. I don't remember working nights there. We were still work I was still working Tracy Penny at night. Yeah. Mm hmm So then yeah, then we are How did we even get this. Okay, job? I remember. So Shauna Shauna was like 
now that you guys are older and like have more customer service experience like you should work at a restaurant and try to be a server because servers in california which this is sean is also from wisconsin yeah. and um servers in california make minimum wage plus tips and in wisconsin they make like two dollars an hour plus tips so it was just like basically you could make a lot of money and i think shauna saw that we were like working so much like doing different jobs mm -hmm. and in school that she was like trying to make our lives easier and saying like you could just get one job yeah so she told us to like i remember remember she told she's like put that you worked at my aunt's restaurant in oh, wisconsin yeah. so we kind of like fudged our resume and said that we had experience we didn't say serving though i think we said we were hostesses yeah. at this restaurant um and so to get like a hosting job was easier because it wasn't as sought after you weren't getting tips yeah so um the guy hired us like on the spot right yeah, yeah. he really liked us he was so we'll nice. get into this so yeah but, so yeah. he hired us like on the spot it was like this um, oh it was called old california mining company yeah it was like this mining like old town country themed restaurant but do you like remember barbecue the smell? place like, yeah i will never forget the smell and it's such it's like that like smoky woody smell yeah and it was like a cozy comforting environment it like, was as far yeah. as restaurants go it was like the coziest restaurant that ever existed it was um what what we had to include this because it's how we got our favorite job yes okay so then yeah we were hostesses it felt like forever but we only worked there i think three months no even less i want yeah. to say so basically we did like it yeah we were working there as hostesses it was kind of overwhelming for us because we had never worked in a restaurant yeah and he would like give us like menu tests and like, and then he would also do you remember he would pay us extra to go yes, uh, i'm gonna say that okay so <laughs> we were doing we were working still working at jc penny um can i have the bronze yeah one? yeah still working at jc which by the way i love this jones or bronzer this is the shade light tan yeah and they gave us the brush too i'm gonna try um we were still working at jc penny um like weekdays and then i'd say we were mostly working at the restaurant on weekend nights because that's when they were the busiest. And I want to say our goal was to become servers at this restaurant. Yeah, so that we could get like tips. Shana said, like get tips, make more money working less. And the servers at this restaurant did make really good money. Yeah, it was a pretty expensive place. Yeah. I remember we saw a Packer player once with his family. Remember oh, that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um and um we even got tipped as being hostesses which once I, in a while yeah once in a while which was nice too. it was pretty easy like you basically just got the to-go orders from the kitchen when people came up mm -hmm. you like you made reservations you sat them like it was pretty easy yeah but it was pretty the easy. restaurant environment was overwhelming yeah, like, and looking really back hectic. like knowing we could never be servers yeah it was not for us like the whole thing yeah. was really hectic and then but yeah the owner or the the manager really liked us and he was like oh can you guys like i'll pay you extra to like basically during the week like go to like local businesses and give them like coupons like in like because they had just renovated and re yeah, like promote the mm -hmm. restaurant and we were like sure so he paid us hourly to do this which it was kind of like a waste of our time but it was extra money and we usually did it it was easy yeah during the weekday when we didn't have classes when we weren't working at jc penny yeah so then um we we were like working at this restaurant and this man like met us there yeah we were hosting he's like oh are you twins his name was bobby yeah well no bobby and jay oh i guess they came out to us together yeah, yeah. bobby and jay um and they well they we'd seen them for they were like a free, lot free yeah friends, visitors of this restaurant but we didn't know them because again we weren't like we weren't servers so we but they would often them. go to the bar which was right by the host stand so they would come in we would say hi to them mm -hmm. ask them how they were doing yeah and then they would go to the bar yeah so one day they approach us at the hostess stand and jay was like i'm the chief pilot at this fbo but he was also the ceo yeah he was this no not no, yet no he wasn't yet oh he wasn't yet no, no. it was after the, he died remember oh um he didn't die but yeah. after the ceo died he became ceo but he was like i'm the chief pilot at this fbo and i'd love if you girls would come work for me at the front desk he and was like you're so nice yeah and we were like what is an fbo and i remember yeah. when we told our mom this story she was like this doesn't sound real. like this doesn't sound real like be careful and like it didn't sound real to us either we had <laughs> no idea what an fbo was if you don't know and at the time he was like it's a full-time job like with benefits like i will and yeah we didn't even we were still on our mom's insurance because we were 21 at the time 20. 20. we were 20. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really care about benefits, but 
he said like full time and he the salary was much higher than what we were making at JC Penney and like at the restaurant. And it would work with our school schedule because yeah. you had to work weekends because it was a front desk, but they still operated yeah. on the weekends. It was just like upper management, obviously. Yeah. It worked. Well, I guess I should get into the backstory. Okay, okay, yeah. Because this is our favorite job we've ever had. Yeah. So we looked up what an FBO was, and it stands for fixed base operation, but it's basically a private airport. And we were so confused, like, I don't understand what this is, but especially like we were like, why are they in North County, San Diego? Yeah, we were like, we figured it out. Yeah, we were like, I don't understand what this job is, but this money sounds like too good to pass up. So we told the restaurant, we were like, peace, we're leaving. And I remember he was like, you girls are gonna be working full time, like that's so hard in school, like you should just stay. And remember he offered to make us servers? Yeah, he's like, I'll make you servers now, which was really nice, but we were like, no, we were set on just like a stable job, and thank God we did it because it was truly the best. I think so, it like changed our life. I think it did too. Yeah. Um. So, I don't think people liked us very much when we first started because it was so confusing how we were hired for this job with like no experience. <laughs> And we were so young looking back. Yeah, like we everyone were so that everyone we, was older we worked with at, yeah. in that position. I would say like everyone was in like their 30s or 40s. Yeah. So anyways, so we basically learned very we had a uniform which was really professional. We had these like blazers with the shoulder pads, pants, yeah. and this like shell white top that we would have to wear. Okay, so yeah, we had I'm like looking at the list, I'm like, oh my god, we have so much to get through, but this is the most important one. We could do two parts if we have to. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, we had a a really like pristine uniform and we basically sat at the front desk and there was an a.m. shift and a p.m. shift the a.m. shift was 5 30 to 2 and the p.m. shift was was it 1 30 to 9 10 or 1 30 to 10 yeah and so we were the a.m. shift um they, they, got, they didn't give us the option but yet looking back we were really happy we were the a.m. shift we did go out some nights though and we were like oh my gosh like we have to work at 5 30 in the morning but <clears throat> we worked 5.30 to 2, and then we had Tuesdays and Thursdays off, and those were the days that we would drive. This is when we transferred to Cal State Long Beach, so we would drive to school twice a week while we were, like, finishing our bachelor's degrees. Um, we did that for two years. It was the... So we didn't have a single day off ever. Like, we were always... Yeah, unless there was no school for some yeah, reason. Yeah, unless there was no school for some reason. That's true. Um, and it got even crazier when we take, like, winter classes. But yeah. Anyways, this job was so accommodating to our schedule. We loved our co-workers. We were like an actual family. family. Like, we spent all of our time together when we weren't at work. Like, but yeah. back then, obviously, we were... And then we had... Like, so we started in the summer, and then we turned 21, like, that January. Yeah. So, when, after we turned 21, like, we all went out together, like... A few times a week, or yeah. we would like go to one of their houses. Like we were always together, and I want to yeah. say, and yeah. basically, so we were the front desk. We were the only people that worked the front desk during the AM shift, mm -hmm. and then yeah, there was like an upper management, and we were basically like a full service F FBO. So mm -hmm. there was a charter department. So that's like if like the salespeople, yeah, like celebrities or business owners or anyone wanted to rent the um, was it a G. No, we had a whole flight. So basically, we had works. a whole flight of yeah. So people, so people pay. I'm just gonna like okay. keep going. Yeah. People pay to um like they basically pay rent to park their jet at the FBO. Yeah. So we had several hangars, so and we had we, tenants. We should also say at this airport, um, there was only there was a United terminal for flights to and from LA. That was all they did all day long. And then the rest was FBOs, okay. and there were four FBOs, which is kind of unheard of. Even LA, like Van Nuys, probably only has like one or two. Yeah, it is unheard of. It was like so. It basically the airport only served to be pr a private, private airport. aviation. So anyone going to San Diego, like proper San Diego, would it fly privately? Would fly into this airport? Yeah. Um. So. The tenants would pay monthly rent for to store their airplanes, and then oftentimes they would also allow JetSource to charter their planes. So when they weren't using them, it was basically like renting out their planes to other people. Yeah. So JetSource had salespeople. That JetSource is the company we worked for. Yeah, I think we said that. Okay. The it's no, it no longer exists. It's been like bought out. Yeah. But um. So, but then we also owned a G4. Like mm -hmm. JetSource owned a G4. The owner owned the one. owner owned it. So they would also charter that one out. So there was like the charter department. Um, but there, how many planes do you think there were? There were like oh my God. six or yeah, seven. So many tenants. And yeah. then, um, then there was also like often every day other um, like charter companies would land. Like there was JetSuite. 
Nut jets. Nut jets. Um, would land and they would need to refuel so we would sell them fuel and then um, oftentimes they would land waiting to pick up passengers so we would just help them with whatever they needed there was a catering department and like we would also have to I remember we had to like cut limes for people's margaritas one time um, we make well, I guess we should say like from day to day our job we were flight support coordinators so we didn't say what we were no I <laughs> So we worked the front desk, like we said, Carly and I worked the morning shift, so we would get to work, we would immediately, we had like a Starbucks coffee machine, so we would set up the coffee machine, everyone raved about the hot chocolate, it was so good. The hot chocolate was so good. We made cookies, Yeah, like, it was just cookie dough that we bought. They were like place and bake from the same brand that Starbucks, or that Subway. Subway has. Um, so we made cookies, um, we would like make sure there was water in the lobby, and then we would just wait for calls, and we had this, so we had a program called what was the program flight called? aware but was that what we used to like track everything i think it was flight aware okay no, there was another program no, maybe right. it was flight aware but basically we had like this program and like a physical sheet so we would get a call and a pilot would say like hey i'm coming in at 8 a.m today dropping off two passengers i'll need some fuel and then i'm turning around and leaving yeah they'd be like this so then we'd be like okay quick turn and then we we always spoke in what well, yeah we you, you use the um the, the uh, what is military alphabet yeah military time and the i don't know it'd be like well all the hill numbers started with n yeah so you'd be for like, north america yes yeah, so you'd be like november um zero eight seven alpha landing at like yeah. 12 or it would be like yeah like 12 15 yeah. two passengers qt would mean like quick turn yeah like we would like so we'd basically we would get the calls then we'd walkie over the walkie to the well, line. Well, we put them in the system, and usually yeah. if they were a prior customer, like we put their tail number in and their information would pop but up. Yeah. So we just have to put what time they're landing, how many passengers, and then um, we, we would tell the line guys over our walkie talkies. Yeah, we'd tell the line guys, and then the line guys were the people we were like best friends with. So yeah. They, there was also also right next to yes, us. Yes. There was also um, an AM shift and PM shift for them as well. So we like obviously only worked with the am shift but because we were all so close people would like hang out with the pm shift but anyway so the line guys would then like prep whatever they needed for this so if they were landing with passengers and we we would also valet their cars we wouldn't the line guys would yeah um they would get their keys out so well, that sometimes they, we would have to if yeah, it was we really busy have, like it was the most stressful thing because these cars were so yeah. nice um we should probably do a whole video on this job because we met like we met Bill Gates one time. Yeah, which can was, we say that? I guess now. Well, we can say it now. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We'll probably have to do a part two to this. Honestly. Yeah. We can do a whole video on this job, but we love this job because we love the people we work with. We love the job. We actually could do homework because on the weekends when we worked, there was barely anyone that landed. It was really just and it um, was so quiet because there's yeah, no the, one upstairs. Yeah. The weekends were really quiet because it, w it wasn't really any business men, which is what typically Monday through Friday was. It was just people that owned planes themselves and wanted to like go for a joy ride on the weekends so it was so much more chill they would just like come in do their own thing we knew them like they were also like family like we were like they were like our regulars yeah. so um it was really chill we loved everything about this job everything yeah it was so hard to leave but then yeah it was kind of so i i guess i want to like get into the actual job aspect more because so we had this program but then once the, they landed oh, the line guys would like walk you to us like tail number blah 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 landed and then we had like a physical log that like it was yeah. pretty high security it was very high so it was a secure um facility facility like you couldn't we let people through the gate yeah like we had like there was obviously this was before um ring cameras and stuff mm -hmm. but there was a camera on the gate mm -hmm. anyway so we would have to physically log it onto like a physical piece of paper and like write down their tail number and then if they got any gas like we would charge them through the system but then also like track it there so everything was tracked several places and then oftentimes oh we would also have to um we would charge them like a landing fee yes like, and a lot of people try to get out of it and it was the funniest thing you've ever seen yeah because there's this one guy so a, yeah. like a single prop engine plane like the tiniest planes that they mm -hmm. make like Cessna. Well, i remember like Cessna's 142 right? yeah, yeah. 72 72 um the landing fee was 20 dollars yeah and so we had this one pilot that would come so often and he would just be anyway he was with um training students yeah and he would just be like I'm just gonna we're gonna go to lunch and I'll bring you back for some pastries and then like I don't need to pay the landing fee right we never made him pay because he always brought us pastries and yeah. it was $20 it's like whatever it was hilarious and like, no one he, like, really did care. not want to pay the fee he just wanted to buy pastries yeah and we didn't have to like push fuel like if someone didn't need fuel yeah 
because it's so expensive. Like, talk about it was the cost. Insane. The big planes, I mean, it, like thousands, thousands of dollars. Yeah, just for to the fill fuel. up. And our fuel prices were competitive, mm -hmm. so I feel like if they needed it, they would buy it. But a lot of times, it was just most of the oh, time. Oh, we also, because we were a full service SP FBO, we also had an entire, like, crew that fixed airplanes. Yes. And so a lot of people would come mechanics. in. Mechanics. Yeah, and have the mechanics work on their plane, which was really unique. A lot of the other FBOs don't do that. Yeah. Um, like, we had a Starship, which is real, from, like, <laughs> and it was not the song, song came out. Yeah. Um, they're real planes. They're just super rare, but we had one stay with us the whole summer because it was being um, worked on. And actually, they had their own mechanic come in, but then work on it with our mechanics, and that was really cool. So that was like a long-term project, but yeah. Um, yeah, you can go into what you were saying too. For oh, I was just gonna say, um, so a lot of times, like sometimes they would call in same day if it was, they kind of knew we were gonna be not busy, but then preferably they would call in like a couple days, and if they were staying with us, we had to like find out the length of their stay. Yeah. We needed to get hotel rooms for the pilots. Mm -hmm. We would do that because we had special rights with the hotels in the yeah. area. Oh yeah. Rental yeah. cars. This was a huge part of our job. How did I forget this? Yeah. yeah. We would book their rental cars rental and cars. their hotel stay. And the rental car people, we became so chummy with them. Mm -hmm. There was this one lady from Hertz. What yeah. was her name? Oh my gosh. She was so crazy. <laughs> she was so crazy. Um, we really liked the people from Avis. They were mm -hmm. so nice. So nice. People from Enterprise. At the time, we heard that you had to have a college degree to work for enterprise i feel like it showed it like did. they were so expensive and the people working there just like were on top of it like knew yeah. what they were doing not like the other but people yeah they didn't. would kind of drive the cars down and we would get them ready yeah um and so we would book them sometimes the we would cars. have to pick up the pilots from the hotel no, oh my gosh people. yes and sometimes <laughs> it would be like 5 30 in the morning and they and were you're like at their hotel like come on and then they're like them. trying to make small talk and you're like i don't want to be doing this yeah but we like carly said before we got to know the, the pilots, like, the pilots so well. really well like the ones that flew in often and I will say for the most part, most of them weren't creepy by they any means. They weren't creepy, but the whole, like, pilots are full of themselves thing is 100% true. Yeah. But you just got to get over it. Yeah, but that didn't bother us. No, but we had favorites for sure. We had favorites, yeah. Um, we had this man that we were obsessed with. Which one? Quentin. Oh, my God. We were so... <laughs> there was two that looked like I thought actual... you meant, like, an older man we were obsessed with. Oh, no, Bobby with. was, like, our work dad. Yeah, Bobby was, like, our work dad. Um, he fixed our car all the time because he like knew he that was the mechanics of planes and yes cars, cars and, and all the mechanics would always fix our car for us yeah it was so nice um but um there was two pilots that actually looked like male models yes andy like, they and should have been in like the top gun yeah and everyone like had a team everyone was team andy they loved him like thought he was so we hot liked andy. he was we loved his personality he was a navy seal which was yes, also he crazy was, yeah he was really insane but we loved quentin yeah you're like into blonde and Andy was a brunette. Like, absolutely obsessed with him. Like, he, ugh, one time he gave me his credit card and told me to order him something, and I was just like, oh. <laughs> he would trust me with his credit card. But yeah, and I remember, he, was, he was there all the time. Do you remember when he got engaged? Yes. And we were like, how did you know she was the one? And he said, he said, this stuck with me. He was mm -hmm. like, well, you know, she has her own life, her own things that she's passionate about, and I have mine, and I like that we can, like... Yeah, yeah we liked his wife. Yeah, and yeah. And then he ended up having a baby right before we left. Um, yeah. But, yeah, Quentin Smith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I hope I never sees this. <laughs> Not like he didn't know we were I know, obsessed with him. I know, he knew we were obsessed with him. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, we, we had, like, favorite pilots for sure, a lot of them. Um, yeah. But yeah, the job was so fun. And then we decided to move to LA because we were graduating college. We worked there for oh, a little over three years. Yeah, we were graduating college. Um, and so we knew we wanted to move to LA. So we left and I remember just sobbing. Sobbing. Sobbing, being so sad. And especially with the line guides, which if you don't know mm -hmm. what they do, they're the ones that like run to the plane when it lands. They put the, um, I don't I know, know what they're saying. called, but like the things under the wheels know, like to the stop it. They're the ones that pump the gas, mm -hmm. they valet the cars, they manage the ground power unit, the GPU, which yeah. is the thing that like pumps air conditioning and power. They were vastly it. underpaid. Vastly underpaid, really, really friendly and good at their jobs. 
Um, and we got so close with them because we worked with them all day. Like, they would get us food. Yeah. Like, they were so sweet, really yeah. good friends. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was really hard to leave them. And the people that worked there. I know. We made so many good friends. It was insane. Yeah. But, um, yeah, now that place has been bought out many times. There's, like, big FBOs, and they just keep buying the smaller ones, basically. Yeah. Um, since when we worked there, the owner died. It was really sad. Mm -hmm. um, and they had gone through some changes. But anyway, so we quit that job and moved to L.A., and we had jobs lined up as production assistants for Clever TV. And so if you, like, I don't know, if you watch YouTube, you probably know what Clever is. It was really not big at the time. Like, well, it was big, but then yeah, it got huge. We got in right before it got, like, really huge. Um, but it was basically like an entertainment news station on YouTube. So they had a ton of different shows, a lot of hosts, and it was really cool. So it was like E! on YouTube, and they would do, it was more like geared towards younger. Yeah. Um, like, kind of like teens and like younger adults. So the people they would interview would be like Disney, Nickelodeon people. Um, but it was really cool. Like, we knew we wanted to work in entertainment moving to LA. Or we, so we thought. We thought, yeah. Oh wait, we didn't also, we talked, we talked about, I know we talked about this on our channel before, but our internship at KUSI. Oh yeah, was that, that was before, you're right. Yeah, so real quick, okay yeah, and then the other thing we did, our last summer in college, we interned at KUSI News, which I know we talked about this before, so I won't stay here long, but we, so this was also, like, you know, during the summer, we, like, we had, we were, we had to have an internship to graduate college yeah. with our journalism degree. But during the summer, like, we didn't have school, obviously, and we still had two days off a week. So we did our internship those two days, and mm -hmm. it was hard because we did, like, the night shift at the news station. So yeah. we wouldn't get home until, like, what, 10 like, or 11? Later than that, I feel and like. And then we'd have to be at work at 5.30. So that yeah. was really hard. Um, but I'm always grateful for it because, again, the people we met there were so kind. Mm -hmm. And we really, really thought we wanted to work in news our whole lives. And then Until after we had this internship. It was traumatizing, and we just said no. Like, we did not yeah, like this. We got to, Mike, the camera guy, would take us out to, like, all the, uh, like, off-site assignments, which we were really grateful for because the working in the newsroom was so sad. Yeah. And, like, not a place we wanted to be. So he would take us out, and we loved, like, the on-the-street interviews we got to do, but everything was just so tragic. So sad. All the stories were really sad. We'll, like, spare you, but we just, like, couldn't do it. And yeah. everyone was jaded. Everyone was also vastly underpaid. So underpaid. Um, so we just, yeah, not our thing. And so when we decided to move to L.A., we knew instead of doing, like, actual news, we wanted to do, like, more entertainment news. And that's when we found the job at Clever. And we actually got this job because... Um, our aunt and uncle had this neighbor growing up, Sue. Shout out to Sue if she ever watches this. Yeah. And we hadn't seen her when we were visiting back home one time. And she was like, oh, you're in school for journalism? Like, that's so cool. My high school boyfriend works at a news station in San Diego. Like, if you ever need he a He was content. like an anchor. Yeah. One time anchor. And so she connected us to him. And then he connected us to HR, and we just were, like, persistent, following up with this HR person, like, every week. Yeah. Until she was, like, broken down and was like, okay, you can intern here. And everyone else that had internships in the journalism school was, like, very lame. Like, yeah. yeah. So we were so lucky in that regard. So lucky, but we fought for that internship. Yeah. But anyway, <clears throat> so, um... Then we moved up to LA and we worked at Clever, and that was always supposed to be a part-time thing, so it wasn't very smart because we were making so much less at Clever because yeah. it was just like a production assistant job than we were at Jet Source, but we had saved what we worked at Jet Source, um, and um, we really loved that job though. We got to like write scripts, which was really cool. Yeah. Um, we liked all the hosts. Like, they were so nice to us. They, like, um, gave us some teleprompter experience. Like, they oh, would yeah. take time out of their day to, like, help teach us. So, it was really nice. Everyone was also really lovely there. But we knew it was temporary. And, like Carly said, it was so part-time. Like, I think one of us worked Monday and Tuesday. One of us, or no, one of us worked Monday, Monday, Wednesday. Wednesday. I think I worked Tuesday, Thursday. Yeah. And we didn't work Friday. So, we were making, like, no money. We had savings from, we saved, like, while we were working at Jet's Horse. Um, thankfully, but we knew we needed to get, like, full-time jobs ASAP. Yeah. So, we worked there, and then I remember they let us go, like, our time ended. It wasn't even like they let us go. It, it was, was like, just, a three-month thing. Yeah. Um, like, right in September. Do you of, remember the timing? Yeah, it was, like, right around Labor Day. And then, 
then we were like scrambling to find jobs. So we both got jobs at Sprinkles. No. Yeah. I worked at Philmont, right? No, you worked at Sprinkles first. Okay. Britta worked there for like a literal week. Yeah. And then she got another job, but I can go into my, so I kept working there because I wanted, I did want a job, but I had weekends off, but it was really hard to find. Um, so at the time I was like, I'll take anything. Like I'll keep working here. And I actually liked it. Like it was very chill. Sprinkles at the Americana. Yeah. Sprinkles at, which is our so mall. So how fitting. Yeah. It was so funny because it was before we even like would frequent that mall. Cause we lived in the Valley at that time. Uh -huh. We're not close to Glendale. Yeah. Um, so, um, I worked just like in the, as an associate and then the store manager was really nice to me. And ironically, she remembered us coming into the San Diego store. So like, she was like, oh, oh really? I remember she was like, oh, you're the twins that would come into the San Diego store. And we went to Sprinkles all the time. Yeah. And mind you, we, we drove like it was 30 minutes. Hoya. It was yeah. not close to Carl's bed. Sprinkles cupcakes. Yeah. And so, um, she was really nice. And like, I, at that point I had a college degree. So she was like, do you want to like be a manager here? It's like, sure. Why not? It was more money. But again, I would still have to work weekends and like weekend nights. And at the time my boyfriend, um, wasn't living here. Maybe he was. Maybe I don't know. At some point he just moved in. It was right away. moved up here. Yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't like, at, at one point we only had weekends to see each other because he was still living in San Diego. So I wanted a job that didn't work weekends, but then, yeah, then he moved in. So then it didn't matter as much. So then I was a manager and I still was looking for a job that was Monday through Friday because Britta had a job that oh was God, Monday I through really Friday. think there's so many. I think we have to do a part two. <laughs> okay, so like Carly said, I was also at Sprinkles but then had been applying to jobs and at the time, like I was trying to get a job, I think mainly in like social media, digital marketing, just because mm -hmm. there were so many jobs. It was like up and coming. It was like a new thing and you didn't need like a ton of experience. You yeah. just needed to essentially be young. Like yeah. people were like, oh, let's hire the young people. So I got a job working as a receptionist slash social media manager for a company. They were in like a streaming service. They streamed a lot of like older shows. And so I would do the social media like behind the scenes of the shows, which was fun. Like I always loved being on sets. So that aspect was fun. I did not mind the front desk aspect as well. Like I actually thought I was really good at it. But overall it was just like not a place that I knew I'd want it to be long-term. So I started applying places. Mm -hmm. And then at this time we were also- Well, I think we're gonna go to part two. Okay, yeah. We we'll, had too much to talk about. We'll go to part two. We're not gonna get ready again, but yeah. we'll like go to part two and continue talking. Mm -hmm.